all the theft, thievery, and home invasions that we are seeing across America, crime sprees are up. Today we're going to be talking about ways that we can defend our home. Not only defend our home, but make it where people don't want to go into it. Maybe deter theft from happening. Let's jump into things you could do that are very economical. Some may cost a little bit, but some are not that expensive. But things that you can do to make your home safer and make sure that you are protecting your family inside. Let's jump into it. Today's video starts right now. Still in Colorado, we're at a primitive camp and there are deer and elk just walking around everywhere. It's a beautiful, beautiful sight. Uh, we are gonna have a video coming up about how we prepare to go somewhere out of state. Uh, we haul a trailer, we're a family of eight, so uh, we have an enclosed trailer, but you won't have to have an enclosed trailer, but we will talk about 10 things that, uh, that you need to bring with you on a trip. But before we do, let's talk about today's topic. 10 ways that you can protect your home, deter uh, crime from happening around you or home invasions. Number one, is have security cameras. Now, there's different versions of this. One would be have security cameras and they actually work. <laughs> Bluetooth or wireless capabilities that go straight to your phone so you can see anything and everything that's happening. I mean, there's ring doorbells that you can look at, things like that. Uh, also, you can look at having fake security cameras. If you can't afford a wireless connectivity or you can't afford a, a, a plan of some sort, you can buy mock cameras. There's been surveys done that if you see cameras around, most people still will not break in. So I challenge you to pick up some security cameras and actually have working ones. But if you can't afford the working ones, just buy decoys. Put, putting them up around your doors, your windows, I'm telling you, it will deter things from happening. Number two, get a dog. Now, dogs are not expensive. You can pick them up at local pounds. Now, if you choose to buy this high-end, special pedigree dog, then yes, you're going to be spending a lot of money. But to be honest with you, if you just go buy a puppy or get one free in a Walmart parking lot, because that happens all the time where I'm from, you can train a puppy just to secure your home. The yapping and the barking actually is a good thing. There was a study done on home invasions, and just by having a barking dog, it cut down on home invasions by 50%. That's huge. So having a barking dog, a yapping dog, even though it may be annoying sometimes, it's very good to have. Most of you probably already have a dog, but if you don't, think about it. Just the bark could literally scare someone away. Number three, reinforce your doors. Now what I'm saying is you may have a simple lock already. Have you thought about putting a chain or putting a hinge pin of some sort? I also used a two by four system where basically you can buy these little hinges that goes on the outside of your door frame. You put a two by four in there. This would be a way that you can reinforce your doors and your windows. This is perfect for economics. Now, I've done a whole video on how we reinforce our doors and how we reinforce our windows in a security screen. Those are very, very costly. But if you say, hey, I, I can't afford that, but I need something, you'd be surprised if you can get one of those mats on the inside of the windows that sticks to the windows that helps from breaking and then putting these two by four slats in, you'd be surprised how that would help people not be able to enter into your home. Same way with your door. Reinforce your door with the two by four systems. I'm telling you, it's a great way to look at it. There are little hinges that go on the outside. It reminds you of an old cabin where you just throw the, the two by four across. It really does work. Number four, Simple post-it signs. If you put no trespassing, warning dog, warning homeowner knows how to shoot, no admittance, that amount of signage really can deter people. It's very economical and allows you just to post it everywhere. Also, here's another idea. Go on Amazon. They make signs that say, warning, you are being watched. Surveillance cameras in use security cameras in use. That little signage can help deter because if they think that signage is there, that means they think those security cameras are working or they think security cameras are watching them, it's not worth it to them. Number five, motion lights. Now I have several motion lights that I use. Some are just right on the corners of the porches and things like that. Here's the ones I'm talking about though. You could go on Amazon, I'll link it below, but it's a red light, it's a sensor, it's a motion sensor. So you put them up and I have them all over my property just in case the power goes out. I can see if there's movement in certain Certain areas but it is a red siren light now it does not have sound but it just spins around like any typical emergency uh, lightage it allows them to be scared also allows you to see where the problem may be and motion sensors can do that if you're in your home and you see a motion sensor light come on it allows you to look at that attention and say there's a problem over in this part of the yard or this side of the house or this side of the forest 
very, very good to have motion sensor lights. Look at the ones that like are bright or strobe or have some kind of red to them. It, it does deter people and if they see it, they run. That's a good thing. Number six, putting roses or hollies or some kind of heavy bristled or heavy thorned style bush under your windows and around your areas of your house that are more vulnerable. I know that sounds crazy, but I'll be honest with you. If I walk through briars or I walk through some kind of rose bushes, if I can walk around them or I can not walk around them or if I can not be around them, that makes me happier. So if you're wanting to protect certain parts of your home, learn to put something that has thorns on it or bristles on it and it makes it very hard to get through. We live in a forest, we live in trees, we move animals all the time. So when you get into an area that has bristles and brush thickness and brush that is thick and also is holly and has all these prickly and pointy things on it, it's gonna run some people off. Your house may not be the one that actually is hit because it may be your neighbors who has got easy access to windows. This is a very economical, easy way to protect vulnerable areas, especially like under windows, things like that. Put some thorned bushes under there to make them so hard to get through and so thick that no one wants to pass it. Number seven is neighborhood watch or apartment watch or building watch. Have a group of community friends who will help you guard your home. They know what you drive, you know what they drive. And if they see a particular uh, vehicle that's not typical, make sure they know you, they want you to call them. Y'all work together and say, look, if you see anything, anything that looks sketchy or cautious, do not be afraid to call me and say, hey, there's something happening you need to be aware of. If we build that nosiness and, and security element of community, that actually is a good thing. So build a neighborhood watch or a hall watch or a city watch or whatever you're doing community. If you're in a subdivision, have a group of buddies who can say, you know what, I see there's somebody walking. That's not a typical guy. That's not John from down the road. Who's that walking right there? People typically scope out areas. So say for instance, you have somebody that's peculiarly walking around that's not typical and three or four people in the community have not recognized him. That neighborhood watch would actually bring attention to that guy and therefore you could solve a problem before it even starts. Number eight, have a security system. Now I'm not telling you to go buy ADT or some kind of uh, Simply Safe or some kind of you know monthly subscription. That's great. If you can afford it, definitely do that because it does watch your home for fire, theft, and burglary and anything else that goes on. But really you can go to any big box store in their electrical section or plumbing section a lot of times they'll have a little section of security and they're little just window alarms and door alarms very economical all they do is when they open you're not calling a 24-hour service but it's gonna make a noise if intruders hear a noise it scares them, it startles them, and they're going to run. They're not gonna stay in your home long, especially if it just keeps on going on and they don't know how to turn it off. So buy those little window and door alarms, even if you don't have a security system. It's very economical and it's a great way to protect your home. Even with us having cameras, even with us having door alarms and window alarms and security systems, we never think it's enough. So we're always looking for ways to protect our home. And window and door alarms and security systems is just another great additive to your home. Number nine is simple too. Even if it's battery operated, leave some lights on in your home each and every day. Have some lights on your porch each and every day. Now, I know people are, are tight because they're worried about their energy prices and utility bills. So I'm not saying, you know, leave your expensive lights on, but you can buy an LED 24 hour light to go in a lamp that costs hardly nothing to run. Have a lamp on. Uh, if you choose to leave your TV on, that's fine, but have some kind of battery operated lamp. If we have one that we can plug into a USB, we can run. It's like a little LED light. It does not hardly run any electrical energy at all. So it doesn't burn anything, but it puts light in the home. When a house is dark, people think that there's no one there and therefore it's gonna allow people to wanna break in. If we can make it look like we're always there, that's good. Also, if you are not using both vehicles or you have a vehicle or you have a way to make sure people think you're home, park your vehicle close to your home. You wanna make sure they think that there's someone always there. Home invasions don't typically want to happen when someone's there. They believe when people are gone, they wanna go in. So I would challenge you to make sure you make it look like you're always at home, have some 24 hour lights, have some dust to dawn lights, have some kind of light system that could help you uh, look like you're always there and always ready. And number 10, let's make it tough on them. So if someone does break into your home, which can happen, invasions happen, crime happens, let's make it tough. 
So how can we do that? How can we make sure the inside of the home is protected? First of all, if you're there, you need self-defense. Second of all, if you're not there, you need decoy safes. You need different boxes, different caches, different things around your home to make it harder for them to find your true valuables. Now, if they steal a lamp or TV, you really can't help that. But I'm talking about your precious metals, your gold, your silver, your cash, your maybe your self-defense tools, anything that you have in your home. Don't just put it all in one place. We want to make it hard for them to find what they're looking for. The less they're able to take, the, the less it costs you. Also, the more time they're spending looking, the more time they may get caught. So make it tough by if they break in, let's have some decoy safes. Let's have some self-defense tools that we can utilize. Let's understand how to defend ourselves. It's all around to, well, we don't want them in, but if they come in, we have to be prepared. All right, guys, there's a whole lot more when it comes to home defense that I could tell you about but it really depends on spending a lot more money. These are more economic ways that you can protect your home and protect your apartment, protect your subdivision home to make sure that you're taken care of. You want to work together to be safe. Your family deserves your obligation and they deserve you watching over them and over your home. You've worked hard for all those goods inside the house. The last thing you want to do is just give it to someone all because you're not protected. So find ways to defend your home, take care of your home, have some security, and I hope this video will help you make some changes for yourself to say, you know what, I could do that better. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there, prepare because we live in a very uh, you know, bad world and is volatile and scary in some of these areas that are seeing higher crime rates. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.